everybody, my name is Zool and welcome to another video tutorial. In today's episode, we are going to be updating our Tamriel Online installation guide. This is a long awaited video and a lot of people have been asking for this video, so here it is. Uh, if you wanna check out some of our other Tamriel Online and Skyrim multiplayer mod coverage, I'll try and remember to throw links in the description of this video. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so before we begin, let's talk about a disclaimer. Let's talk about the prerequisites. First thing we're gonna to need to know is you need administrative rights to your computer, you need administrative rights on the host computer, and you need to have access to your router. Uh, so if you don't have access to your router, if you're not an administrator on your computer, you're not gonna be able to do this. That should be pretty obvious, but I figured I'd mention it up front. Uh, now I'm just gonna very briefly touch the things that you need to have on your computer in order to install Tamriel Online, just to make sure that everything works. Uh, so everybody needs this, whether you're hosting or running the mod as a client. Uh, we're gonna start off with the first requirement, which is Visual C++. What you are gonna to need to do is download both of these files and install them. You might already have them installed, but you should check anyway. You need the 64-bit and the 32-bit uh, version of the software, regardless of what version of Windows you're using. The second thing that you really need to do is have a completely fresh copy of Skyrim installed. So I would actually recommend uninstalling the game and reinstalling it, regenerating your any files. This is the best, easiest way to make sure that it's not some other mod causing your crashes and stuff like that. It's just gonna make it easier if you have a fresh, clean any file and we don't need to worry about anything else. Um, the only thing you could and uh, possibly should do to your any files is run through the step any tweaks. Those are perfectly safe, I'll link those down below. You can go ahead and do these and you won't experience a problem, at least I personally haven't, and it should uh, remedy some of the problems people have been having. I've also read from various comments and sources online that uh, cleaning the update.esm will remedy some crashes people have during the intro sequence. I'm not gonna be covering that in this video, but that is something to keep in mind for troubleshooting. Next up, you need to have SKSE installed. Pretty straightforward. I'm not gonna cover how to install SKSE in this video, so if you're looking on a guide for that, I've done it before. I'll throw a link somewhere down below, but it's pretty straightforward. Uh, for this video, we are going to be using Mod Organizer. Uh, it's asking me to endorse Mod Organizer, which I will get to later. Uh, so Mod Organizer is the modding tool we are going to use because that allows us to have a nice clean Skyrim in the background and we're able to easily add and remove mods, stuff like that. Use Mod Organizer, it's gonna make our life a lot simpler and since it's what I'm using, uh, I can't guarantee that if you use a different mod manager, it's going to work. Next up, the mods we need installed are Sky UI. Uh, it's pretty much the only mod that is required, so go ahead and download Sky UI. I can't really believe anybody would play Skyrim without Sky UI, but uh, there it is. Go ahead and install that using your mod manager. Uh, so once you've reached this point, you now have the base stable platform for which we are going to install the Tamriel on Online mod on top of. Okay, so we're on to the point in this guide where we're gonna be installing Tamriel Online, the mod itself. Uh, to do that, we're gonna start off by going to uh, the Tamriel Online mod page and heading over to the files section. From here, we are gonna scroll down and we are going to manually download the Tamriel Online client. Uh, don't worry about downloading with manager, anything like that. Just make sure you manually download the client. Again, you'll see it requires SKSE and Sky UI, but we've already got those. So manually download this. Uh, if you want to donate, go ahead. Uh, the authors of this mod work very hard to do whatever black magic they do to get the game running like this. Uh, and then basically take the zip file that you downloaded and drag it to your desktop. All right, once you have the Tamriel Online client folder downloaded to your desktop, you're going to use 7-zip, which is an archiving tool that I've covered in the past, to extract it into a folder, which I have done right here before your eyes. And from this folder, we are going to open it up. Now inside, you'll see a data folder, and you will see a FOMOD folder. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just open up my Skyrim SKSE directory here. Uh, really quickly, this can be found at Steam, Steam Apps, Com, and Skyrim. You'll notice I'm using tabbed folders. That's just to make the video look a little bit cleaner. Going back to our Tamriel Online folder, I am going to first open up the FOMOD folder. Inside the FOMOD folder, we have an info, some scripts, uh, and some DLLs, and finally an INI. What we're actually gonna do is we're going to take 
all the stuff in here. Specifically, we just need this, but uh, I'm just gonna grab it all here. Copy. And we are going to paste it in our main Skyrim directory. This is not the data folder. This is the Steam, Steam Apps Commons, Skyrim folder. It is the same place where SKSE is installed. It is the same place where the tesv.exe is located. Take those files and place them here. Now, some people may have problems with these DLLs. If you're using Windows 10, this can cause a bit of a problem. So you may need to open the properties window of each DLL and unblock them. You can do that by right clicking, uh, just specifically on the DLL, hitting properties, and it might be a locked or hidden or something like that. In my case, it's not, so I can't actually show you, uh, but that is something to check if you are experiencing problems. And a special thank you to the Tamriel Online Reddit page for pointing out that issue. Now that we've moved our Tamriel Online stuff from the FOMOD folder over into our Skyrim directory, uh, we're going to need to worry about the rest of the mod. So come back to the Tamriel Online client folder that you downloaded and select the data folder. I'm going to right click on this and then using 7-zip, I am going to uh, add to archive. From there, I need to create a zip file. I am going to call it to.7-zip or to.zip, it doesn't really matter. It'll only take a few moments and there we go. We have our mod now and I'm going to actually take this folder and drag it to my desktop. From here, I'm going to launch the Skyrim Mod Organizer. All right, so in my Tamriel Online, or sorry, in my Skyrim Mod Organizer, I've created a new profile called TO. This is for Tamriel Online. And the only mod that I have loaded is SkyUI. So what I need to do now is I need to add this mod from a file. You can do that in a variety of ways, including just clicking right here on this button on your mod organizer. Uh, and when on our desktop, we're just gonna go ahead and scroll down until we find to.7zip. We're gonna open it, we're gonna hit manual, set the data directory, everything should look good after that, and click OK. From there, we're gonna scroll down, we're gonna check on to, which is uh, Tamriel Online, the Skyrim multiplayer mod. And boom, there we go. Tamriel Online client should now be installed. So now that we've done that, we are going to need to configure our INI so that we can connect. And this is going to uh, kind of transfer us to the next part of the guide. So I'm gonna put a little block right here and we will move on. All right, so we are now gonna discuss connecting to a Tamriel online server. Remember, this is still the client that we're installing and every single person using the mod needs to have the client installed. Now, with the client, there is three ways to connect. You can connect to yourself. Uh, so if I'm the host of the game, I would connect to myself. You can connect over LAN or the local area network. That is where Somebody is hosting Tamriel Online in the same building as me, in the same network as me, uh, and I want to connect to them. Finally, there is connecting over the internet. So that is, I want to play Tamriel Online with my friend who lives at a different house. I'm going to need to enter the information in a specific way to connect to their game that they are hosting. All of these different connection methods are going to be done within the tamrielonline.ini. This is the file that you grabbed out of the FOMOD folder here and dragged into your Skyrim main directory. What we're gonna do is we're gonna find our Tamriel Online INI and we are going to open with Notepad. All right, there we go. So this is what the Notepad document is going to look like. And we're gonna mainly focus on the local area network settings. Now, if you're doing a self-connection, that is the server is being hosted on your computer, you can leave everything exactly the same. The, uh, the IP address right here is the IP address of whatever computer you're currently using. As for the port, always leave that at 9933. For the LAN connection IP address, you're going to need to do the following at the host computer. First off, you're going to need to get a static local IP. I'm not covering that in the video, so click on the link in the description to go to my video covering that topic. From there, you need to go to the following website to get your local area network IP address. Now, if you're on the host computer, go to the following website and it will give you your local IP address, although you probably should have found this when you were making your local IP static. From here, write down this number and share it with your various friends who are trying to do a local area network connection. They are going to need to take this value and they are going to need to paste it in their connection IP settings. Again, leaving the port as 9933. So any clients attempting to join need to have the host's 
local static IP address. All right, finally, if you are trying to host Tamriel online across the internet, then what you're going to need to do is create a local static IP on the host computer, and then you are going to need to port forward port 9933. Uh, to do this, again, you're going to have to check out that other video. We're not going to be covering it in great detail. However, once you create the static IP and do the port forwarding, you need to have access to your router to do this. You can then go to this website right here, whatismyip.org, and you will find a section, again, this has to be on the host computer, uh, that says your IP address, and then it'll give you a string of numbers. You want to write this set of numbers down and give it to your friends who are then going to go ahead and take that and put that in the INI file. As long as you have the ports forwarded and everything else, then this IP address should work and you should be able to connect. All right, so this part of the video is gonna deal with how to host a Tamriel online game. This is only needed if you are on the server computer or the host computer. The first thing you need to do is head over to the Tamriel Online Nexus page. From there, navigate to the file section and you're going to need to download the second of the main files, which is the Tamriel Online server file. This is only available via manual download, so go ahead and manually download it, continue past the requirements, uh, consider giving a donation because this mod is awesome, and then uh, just wait for the download to complete. I'll cut ahead. Okay, so now that we have Tamriel Online Server downloaded, I've dragged it to my desktop, I've extracted it using 7-zip. Remember, this is only needed on the host computer. Uh, then we need to open up the folder. I'm using tab folders, don't be alarmed, I've covered that before. So what we're going to be doing is inside this folder, you'll see a bunch of different things. We're gonna open up the SFS2X folder. This stands for Smart Fox Servers or something like that. And we are going to run the SFS 2x-standalone-exe, that's this one right here. We're gonna go ahead and run this. Now, it might be blocked by your firewall, which you can see here, uh, but in order for it to work, we are going to need to allow access to this. We're going to let it through the firewall, and this is going to actually start the Tamriel online server itself. Now, you're gonna see a whole bunch of different uh, jar files and all that kind of stuff being generated. Don't be alarmed if you haven't seen this in other guides or stuff like that. Uh, that's only from the first time you launch this. After that, just uh, click again and launch it, and it will look like this, and it will end with the word ready, letting you know that you are ready to connect to the server. And that is it for this video. Please stay tuned to my port forwarding guide and please check out some of our other Tamriel Online and Skyrim Online multiplayer content, all that kind of stuff. Until the next time, I've been Zool. I hope you have an excellent day. Yeah.